Let's start with the video. Can you talk to me about what you guys actually saw, like what stood out from the video to you? And I'd love to hear from somebody we haven't yet heard from today. Uh, Chanel, go ahead. What did you catch from the video clip? For the news one with the weather guy, um, I said that Everest has been moving northeast at four centimeters, like a year. Did anybody else catch that? Yeah, me too. Okay, cool. Can someone just explain quickly northeast for me? Like, what does that actually mean is going on? No, and I'm not talking to you. <laughs> Ethan gave me a little demonstration. Mallory, what do you mean? So if north is here and east is here, it's kind of moving in a diagonal through north and east. Can somebody say it a different way? Okay. No, no, no. Yeah, like we're, we're getting there. <laughs> Sophie, what does it mean? Like in between? In between both what? Mm -hmm. Like north and east. In between north and east. Okay, so if I'm a mountain, right, it's going north and east like this, right? Is that right? Or is it like this? Like that? Yes? So wait, maybe we could like turn the rug into like a coordinate plane. So if this is like a coordinate plane in math, right? If that's north, right? This would be just moving this to north, right? And this would be just moving east, right? So northeast would be going towards Dex. Is that right? Yes. Okay, cool. So in your model, I want you to show how Mount Everest is actually getting taller by six to seven centimeters each year, okay? And at the same time, I also want you to think about how is it actually moving to the northeast? So not only is it growing taller, right, but it's growing taller and it's moving. So I want you to think about what is actually causing that change. That timer's up there. I want you to work under that time constraint. Does not have to be fancy, simple ideas. How is it actually getting taller? How is it moving to the northeast? Okay, so you should have how it gets taller and then also how it moves to the northeast. Right? Two movements. Now with that other color, okay, I want you to now, with that other color, think about how the earthquake happens. So now I want you, in that other color, to actually explain how the earthquake happens, okay? And think about how what typically happens now compares to what actually happens when this earthquake occurs. I'm hearing people say like, oh my gosh, do you have this? So there's parts of the world that have really big ones, right? Um, they can happen in the middle of the ocean. Does anyone notice anything else where a lot of these tend to happen? What does the relief map tell us about where these earthquakes are actually happening? <coughs> Besides the ocean, because Charlie points that out. Sebastian? Wherever, like... The brown areas on that map or were mostly where the earthquakes are? Yeah, we tend to see that there might be some sort of connection between, hey, a lot of these earthquakes are actually happening near what? And even mountains, mountains yeah, right? Mountains. So just to kind of standpoint, I mean, I know when I like told you like something about Mount Everest, this is so intriguing to us because we, A, don't have any mountains near us, right? Chicago is like totally flat. And interestingly enough, now when we bring up the relief map, we don't have any dark brown near us here in Chicago, right? And now when I also look at the seismic explorer, right, the earthquake simulator, what can you also tell about Chicago? Nothing. 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 No earthquakes. Okay. Um, actually, I have two ideas. Could I? Share one, please. Um, 
I would like to do like a simulator, but only with like the higher earthquake, so we can see if there's like any more any like areas in the world where there's like more denser earthquakes to support the reasoning. Oh, wait a minute. So I hear you saying that Everest was a big earthquake. You want me to rerun it with only certain types of earthquakes? Yeah, like only higher up earthquakes. I don't know if I can do that. Should we try it? Yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna restart it. I'm gonna zoom out. And then hold on a second. I'm gonna zoom out all the way. I don't want this. Okay. Um. And you want me to change the magnitude? Yeah. What do you want, guys? Uh, five. Zero. Five. I'm going to six or like six, six or seven. five. Six or five. 6.2? Yeah. Okay, and then you want me to run it and we'll see where it goes? Yeah. Here we go. One thing I noticed what people do, and I, this is something I want our class to work on, okay, is us actually building on each other's ideas. Okay, So oftentimes we want to just be heard, right? To be heard, and like, oh, I asked my question. Good, I'm done, right? So on the board behind you, there's three sentence stems I want us to really think about as we share our questions, okay? So as someone shares, right? They'll say a question, and then the next person is going to share. But I want them to really think about, hey, how does your question actually relate to someone else's question? So I gave you some tips, right? So you can say, my question relates to Blank's question because, or my question connects to Blank's question because, or you can even say, like, hey, someone's question actually made me wonder. So I recognize that today you may end up with a question on the board that isn't in your notebook, but it's something that kind of came up, okay? here is going to write the category heading that's on the blue post-it note. So they'll write like fault lines and tectonic plates. And then they're going to spend some time as a group actually reading through the questions in that category. And then I want you to write down here as a table, there's no wrong ideas at this point, like what kind of data might we need to help us solve that? What kind of investigation can we do? And we'll come together as a class, like how can we actually answer our questions? Okay? Sound good? Please remember, the sky is the limit. So like, don't tell me like, oh, we're limited because we're a sixth grade classroom at a school. We will find a way to make it work, okay? Um, kind of like I think back to when Johnny had mentioned in our thermal energy unit, like, oh, Mrs. Frenzo, there's this app on the phone that like measures light. And then I didn't have that app, but like our school science closet had those light meters. Remember when we use those? So we'll make, if there's a will, there's a way, 